What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Macabre Gorium Labs presents School of Boredom, showcase of things likely forgotten. My name is Mr. Bats, and I'll be your guide today as we explore lesson number 105, Mad Balls, the grossest toy line of the 1980s. Warning. The following program contains scenes which may offend some viewers. Others may experience mild discomfort, nagging backache, post-nasal drip, and delirium, followed by rapid heartbeat, swelling of the nose, throat, and abdomen, and loss of facial hair. Repeated viewing of this tape may result in the loss of one's bodily functions, redistribution of facial features, premature baldness, and a difficulty in forming simple sentences. So, if you're seriously considering a rewarding, challenging career as a lawn ornament, this is the show for you. In an attempt to make this video a little more interesting, we're going to break it down into a few different parts. So without further ado, part one, the beginning. Mad Balls is a series of toy balls from the mid-1980s, 1986 to be exact. These toys were originally created by Amtoy, a subsidiary of American Greetings, a company we will showcase again in future lessons. Amtoy created a division called Those Characters from Cleveland, or TCFC, to help design toys for their company. You see, in the mid-1980s, a trading card company named Topps created a very strange trading card, and that trading card was the Garbage Pail Kids. It is important to note what Garbage Pail Kids are, as they had a direct influence in not only this lesson, but a handful of others that are coming soon. Now we'll come right back to that in just a moment. Early on, the American Greetings Company was producing toys like Care Bears, Holly Hobby, and Ziggy, along with a few others that were specifically marketed for young females. In a successful attempt to diversify their marketing range, the TCFC was tasked with creating a toy specifically marketed to young males. Semi-unexpectedly, however, this would also become a huge hit with young females. So, I guess it doesn't matter who you are. We all enjoy a gross toy now and then. Taking notes from another popular fad of the era, the Garbage Pail Kids, the team quickly went to work on creating some grotesque toys and they would later become known as Mad Balls and My Pet Monster. The Garbage Pail Kids is a trading card slash sticker collectible that is parodying the very popular dolls known as the Cabbage Patch Kids. Only these kids are far from adorably annoying, but instead were disgusting and gave us hours of jokes and gross out good times. Not to mention all the making fun of your friends that had the same names as those on the cards. Mad Balls would eventually go on to become a national success and a huge fad of the era, not to mention the topic for this very lesson. The original concept for Mad Balls is based on that of Hot Potato, and there was even an unofficial contest to see who could draw the most grotesque face. The winning designs were some of those used as the original Mad Balls. Mad Balls was and is a toy for all ages that consists of various baseball-sized foam rubber balls designed to look like gross monsters or creatures. The original run would span two series and a couple of mini-series. Series 1 consisted of Screamin' Mimi, which was a screaming baseball with a large tongue. Slobulus Aurelius, a drooling green creature with one eye hanging out and a goofy look on his face. Arg, a one-eyed Frankenstein monster style creature with stitching all over his face. Hornhead, a horned cyclops with a giant nose ring. Dustbrain, a mummy with rotting teeth and wrinkled teal skin. Oculus Orbis, probably one of the most popular, is a bloodshot eyeball, plain and simple. Skullface, a skull with large eye sockets with teeny tiny red eyes and a big set of exposed teeth. 
he also has a partially exposed brain. Which brings us to Bash Brain. Bash Brain is a red skinned zombie with a partially exposed brain. When Mad Balls were released, they were an instant success and flew off of Toys R Us shelves. For those of you that don't know, Toys R Us was a toys only toy store that recently closed down here in Washington State. One highly interactive store that actually encouraged parents to let their kids play while they shopped. Mad Balls originally sold in these stores for $3.99, which made it very easy for kids to convince their parents to buy them for them. But with the popularity of these toys came a fair amount of complications. The first generation was made out of a hard rubber, and that resulted in serious bruising as kids were throwing them at each other. After all, they were balls. Facing possible legal problems from parents of injured children, the material was switched to a softer foam for future series. Another problem that was involved with the first series was that somebody chose the name Crackhead to describe the split skulled Madball. Now, Amtoy may have thought at first that this was a good name, but pretty much as soon as it was released, they did face some backlash. Now this backlash was caused because crackhead is a street slang term, usually associated with a description of someone who uses the highly addicting, terrible drug, crack cocaine. Kids, don't smoke crack. Crack is wacky ho, and you know what? That's probably why they changed his name to Bash Brain. Seemed a little more fitting. Which brings us to the second series of Mad Balls, which included Snake Bait, a Forked Tongue Gorgon, Freaky Fullback, a Mutant American Football Player, Bruise Brother, an Ugly Biker with a Battered Blue Helmet, Wolf Breath, a Werewolf with large rotten fangs dripping with blood, Fist Face, a Severed Hand Clutching an Eyeball. Swine Sucker, an ugly, drooling boar. And finally, Lock Lips, a creature with its jaw locked shut and one eye covered by a riveted metal plate. Next up was Head Popping Mad Balls, a posable figure with interchanging heads. That set consisted of Dust Brain, Skull Face, Screamin' Mimi, Oculus Orbis, Horn Head, Slobulus Aurelius, Bruise Brother, Wolf Breath, and Lock Lips. With all the success Mad Balls was having, other companies tried to make similar toys. There were the Blurp Balls made by the Ertl Company, Weird Balls by the Mel Appel Company, and Spit Balls by Leonard Toys, but none of them were as widely liked as the Mad Balls. Unlike other toys of the 1980s, this particular franchise never got the cartoon treatment. Now this was surprising, as most toys from the 80s were designed specifically to sell you toys. However, there are two direct-to-home video releases. One of those was Escape from Orb, a 22-minute in length video released in 1986, was the first and it featured a girl madball named Freakella who looked like the Bride of Frankenstein. Much like other cartoons we have showcased, you guessed it, this one had an awesome theme song as well. Here, let's have a listen. Great balls of fire. plot for the story was simple. The Mad Balls are a rock band living on an oppressive planet, and they just want to come to Earth to rock out and enjoy freedom. Also in 1986, Marvel Comics subsidiary Star Comics released a three-issue comic book. The second Mad Balls video was released in 1987, and it was titled Mad Balls Gross Jokes. It was also 22 minutes and had the Mad Balls performing skits similar to that of Monty Python. Now for those of you who don't know what Monty Python is, it was a British comedy group that did sketch comedy. It first aired on BBC in 1969. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty funny. There was a bi-monthly comic book released in 1987. 
However, the comic book was cancelled after reaching issue number 10. Then later in 1988, a Mad Balls Annual was released by Marvel as a hardback graphic novel. This story centered around the origin of the Mad Balls and their creator, Dr. Frankenbeans. He attempted to control the Mad Balls, which results in hilarious antics. The book also included games and activities. In 1988, Ocean Software produced a video game for the 8-bit home computer. It didn't really receive good reviews due to its bird's eye view, however. Flash forward to 2006, where the company Art Asylum partners with American Greetings to bring back the Mad Balls using the old designs and bringing some new characters to life. Series 1 from Art Asylum Mad Balls featured five original Mad Balls and one new one to add to the line. This consisted of Bash Brain, Hornhead, Repvile, Screamin' Mimi, Skullface, and of course, Slobulus Aurelius. Repvile is a blue, scaly reptile creature which fits in nicely with the other Mad Balls crew. Basic Fun Incorporated worked on production and selling of the new Mad Balls, and they were designed by one of the original artists, James Groman. Here in the U.S., we started to see this fun toy reappear on store shelves around 2007. Art Asylum created Series 2 in 2008, and it included another five from the original line with, again, one new one. And this set consisted of Dust Brain, Swine Sucker, Freaky Fullback, Oculus Orbis, Wolf Breath, and Blackbeard. Blackbeard was an ugly pirate with pus dripping from his eye, an eye patch, a hook holding up his eyelid, and a bandana on top of his head. Series 3 was seen at the Toy Fair in 2009 with new toys, and most of the pictures can still be found online. There was Snake Bait, Fist Face, and Lock Lips with the new Mad Balls, Puck Teeth, Nail Biter, and Mosh Pits. Art Asylum also had a fourth series in the works when the third was shown in 2009. There are also pictures of those on the internet. And that means it's time to segue on to part two. Part two, Mad Balls Lost? This would be the final series designed by Art Asylum as there was a merger between Basic Fun and Good Stuff Incorporated. Unfortunately, Mad Balls was lost by the merger. But there was another video game released in 2009, Mad Balls in Babo Invasion. And just so you know, you can find gameplay of this game on our partner channel, MGL Plays. Mad Balls Babo Invasion was developed by a company called Playbrains and distributed on Xbox Live Arcade in 2009. It was later released for Microsoft Windows in September of 2009. This game was a shooter with a bird's eye view. You roll your babo through a labyrinth style map fighting enemies, solving puzzles, and attempting to kill bosses. There are 10 babos in total, each with different abilities and stats. This game had mixed reviews from Xbox Live Arcade critics, and the graphics and gameplay were reviewed as good, but the characters annoyed players to no end. Despite all of that, Hardcore fans of Mad Balls liked the game for the most part, myself included. And that means it's time to move on to Part 3. Part 3. Back again. Over the years, there have been many changes to the toy's design in order to keep consumers happy without them feeling that the toy is considered too gross. At the 2015 San Diego Comic Con, Mondo had some examples of the returning Mad Balls, but they were now called Mondo Balls. Mondo released Mondo Balls with Skullface, Hornhead, and Slobulus leading the pack. Although they are part of the original Mad Balls, they have been updated with an amazing amount of detail. The Mondo Balls are affordably priced vinyl ball figures from a variety of genres. Mondo eventually signed a deal with Marvel Comics to bring their characters to life, the first of which being Venom. 
Future Mondo Ball sets were planned for both Gremlins and the Friday the 13th movies. Now it is important to know that Mondo Balls are a collectible and they are not a toy to play with. Now we hop on over to the spring of 2017 where American Greetings and Just Play teamed up to make a kid friendly line of Mad Balls. Kid Robot also teamed up with American Greetings and produced a Mad Balls collection of merchandise to go with the toys. This series also included 16 of the Mad Balls from the original toy line. Part 4, The Wrap Up. Now we're here in 2019, and a lot of us are very happy that Mad Balls didn't disappear from our lives like most of the toys from our youth. Hopefully, we will always be able to share this disgustingly adorable and cool toy with our children, not to mention play with it ourselves. <laughs> this also goes to show that some toys can just be timeless and will remain fun no matter what stage of life you are in. Well, that about wraps up all the time we had planned for this lesson. We hope you enjoyed this awesomely disgusting look into the past. I've been your guide, Mr. Bats, and this has been the Macabgorium Labs School of Boredom, lesson number 105, Mad Balls, the grossest toy of the 1980s. Join us next time for lesson number 106. You never know what we have in store. And remember, think for yourselves, and as always, keep it creepy. Please don't forget to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can see all of our new content as soon as it comes out. It is my destiny to one day become Shogun. Anything is possible when you divide by K5.